How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show. Today, we're doing another subscriber request. This one is known as ticker symbol ESI or Element Solutions. Okay, so Element Solutions is a specialty chemical producer. And some of the uh, things they produce, for example, are such as ion baths, solders and fluxes, photo masks, coatings, packaging, graphics, and hydro uh, rolics, hydraulics. <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way, hydraulics. <laughs> so um, basically, another thing that they're kind of expanding to is they're performing or actually, sorry, expensing a lot of R&D into green materials, right? So uh, in summary, we're kind of looking at to see or waiting and seeing whether or not that kind of comes into fruition and whether or not they can benefit from that, but we'll see later, all right? So let's actually get started on the price action. I'll share that with you guys right now. Um, so to get started, here we kind of look over the past five years, they had this explosion and actually everything exploded for them more recently, right? So the business is actually performing really well more recently, okay? So if you were a long-term investor just holding this, you'd be, you were very patient, right? Because your performance is actually quite abysmal for five years, right? All of the gains happened uh, after the pandemic, right? Or during the pandemic. So over the very long term, we had this massive drawdown because this was basically a lot of the problems where the business kind of stemmed from, but they're, they're past that now, okay? The past is the past, and we are judging whether or not going forward into the future, they're going to be able to uh, sustainably provide us some rate of return, okay? So taking a look here, what Google says, the P ratio is about 23.7. I will right, we'll take a look at that later and kind of talk more about that. But from here, let's actually go to the presentation and uh, discuss some of the key factors or key things that they're kind of trying to show us. Again, this is the sales pitch. And we go over the presentation sometimes to see what the company is trying to sell us on, right? And if we don't find anything good in the sales pitch, we're probably not gonna find anything good in the underlying numbers, all right? So that's kind of like the reason why we go over this, all right? So we do see that there has been some decent growth more recently. So consistently year over year and then organic, right? So constant currency and organic. So I'll explain what that means. So organic is as if not, no other factors are taken into account. Constant currency uh, basically is when we take into account the currency is the same, right? There's no change. That's the growth rate um, in that. So they had more growth with constant currency versus organic growth. And then they actually define down here uh, with the asterisk. If you follow the asterisk in these presentations down here, these financial measures on the side or subsequent sides prepared in accordance with gap so that's basically what it means if you guys were wondering what that meant okay so um let's take a look down here this is the different types of businesses so key drivers growth uh ev customers and you can understand why they're now exploding so assembly circuitry and semiconductor right those are their uh growth avenues and they can they explain to you right here you can pause the video and kind of read that uh, but Basically, they're in segments of the market, which are growing rapidly and all of a sudden are growing very rapidly. So the business is actually benefiting. Uh, so down here, we can actually see different part, other parts. So industrial side, industrial graphics and energy, right? So here, actually, growth is down. Ongoing delays in investments, offshore drilling. We've been discussing this on the channel for quite some time. So there's, there's all this... Uh, things going on right now, or this movement going around in the energy space. And for those of you who don't know, I've uh, been invested in ConocoPhillips ever since November 2020. And so I've done fairly well, expressed that as to why in other videos. It's on the chopping block, like I actually might liquidate that one soon or take my profits finally, um, especially now that they're, it's actually on the uh, low tax basis side. So I won't pay too much tax now because it's long-term gains. Uh, so ongoing delays, investment, offshore drilling. Again, we've talked about that. All right. So it's good to see that, you know, as we explore other companies, we're kind of seeing more and more information kind of validating that previous theory or thesis. Uh, okay. So I actually want to go here because this is the growth rates and why we want to see this is these are their projections. So forward year adjusted EBITDA growth. EBITDA is sometimes a proxy for cash flows. I don't really care too much about EBITDA, but uh, let's take it as that's kind of some semblance of growth EPS. Okay. So forward year adjusted EPS of 40%. They are doing buybacks and we'll actually get to that in the model. But so some of that EPS earnings per share growth is actually due to buybacks. 
but uh, adjusted forward year um, EPS is about 40%. And then uh, forward year free cash flow of about $265 million. All right, so pretty good. Um, they do do a lot of business in China, by the way. They actually sell into China. So this is actually one of those businesses that you can actually participate from growth in China because they're selling into China. And that's what has to do with the uh, capital restrictions that we've already discussed in other videos. That's kind of like way earlier in the channel, by the way. That's the China series. Um, haven't made a China video in a long time. All right, so going to the model, uh, which is over here, and uh, we can kind of see the uh, growth rates that I already kind of plugged in, right? Not to waste anyone's time, so you can kind of, uh, good idea. Actually, did um, let me see if this is not porting in. I guess it's not porting in this right now, but uh, we don't need that. We just care about this. So uh, required rate of return, I put it at 15%. And then uh, the growth rates I did based on the projections going forward on the sales. But if we actually take a look at, you know, for example, the efficiencies in terms of cash flows, they're growing a little bit faster. So they're growing about 15%. They might have the capacity to grow about 15%, but the sales are projected to grow 12%. And I was promising you, I was going to explain this. Uh, they have actually uh, experienced greater growth than the past couple of years. So here's the average growth going forward. They're just exploding, right? They actually just made an acquisition of a privately held chemical company. So they're also acquiring other businesses, but their growth is kind of exploding more recently versus the, the past, right? And we don't want to look to the past and rely on the past to determine the future. We kind of want to look at the past and go, hmm, that's interesting. And then look to the future and go, okay, that's what I think it's going to do. Okay. So that's something to think about. They have been doing buybacks. So I actually have been uh, including that here. Um, I think maybe if we want to be a little more conservative, we can say 1%. And so if we do that, you can start to see that we actually require greater growth rates to acquire that same rate of return. 15% is above market average. So it's not something to sniff at. And then again, you have the icing on the cake if the market's willing to pay a higher multiple in the future. So if things get crazy and they pay a really high multiple, you could also benefit from that. But we're not implying that here in the, in the model because that's a speculation. That's not a certainty. Okay. So Taking a look over here, let's go to the key ratios and let's see what's going on. So the um, current ratio, very good, very healthy. Cash ratio, that's a conservative measure. I don't need to see that above one. I don't. I would love to, but don't need to see it. I see the solvency ratios across the board. They're getting better. All right. So again, if you, for those of you who are new, I have this column right here to follow along. You can pause the video at any time and just be like, okay, that's getting better. That's getting worse, and that's supposed to help you out. Uh, the DuPont analysis is telling us something about scalability. They're maintaining margins about st uh, pretty stable. Operating margins are improving, so they're actually improving efficiencies within the business. And then not net profit margins are actually going up too. ROA, ROE. Okay, those are good for a business like this. Uh, let's go to the, um, let's see, yeah, let's take a look at the earnings quality. Earnings quality is really good right now. You can kind of see how things have improved, right? Earnings quality was abysmal back in the days when they weren't really growing. And then all of a sudden in 2020, uh, 2021, they exploded, right? Earnings quality was the models picking up that it was really good. And then 2022, or sorry, this is 2021. This is 2020. Because if I go back here, let me make sure. Yep. So 2021 was really good. 2020, it started to pick up and it was really good. Let's take a look at kind of what happened in uh, uh, 2020. So 2020 was right here. Actually, it was right before the explosion. So the model was picking up high earnings quality, and then the stock price actually uh, rose quite drastically. So pretty good. Good job, model. Um, and let's take a look here down here at the inventory. Okay, so this is something I don't expect the cash reverse cycle to be really low. Uh, they are not the final product. They have customers. It's business to business. So they sell to a lot of manufacturing companies, et cetera, like, and stuff like that. A lot of industrial businesses. So Nothing concerning here. Uh, you can pause the video and kind of see if they've been proving on any metrics or not, but I'm not going to spend too much time here. Um, for the most part, I'll take, uh, take some final thoughts on the, on the summary report. I don't think this business is at risk of bankruptcy. Uh, this is kind of like, even though the model's picking up an unknown, and also the Altman Z scores, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, in the unknown space, right? I think now things are improving. It's kind of basing it off of, or not basing, it's not basing it off of the past, but um, it, it's kind of, uh, they're in a stage where they're improving their books, right? So that's kind of why that's probably picking that up. 
Um, the book value, I don't really care for business like this. Uh, obviously, if you can get it below book value for this tangible book value, then it, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, but it's not something I expect to trade at book value. Uh, they are paying a modest dividend. And I do think that dividend is plenty of room to grow. So if you're a dividend investor, there you go. So this business is an interesting play on the chemical space. It's a lot cheaper than a lot of other companies like Sherwin Williams and, um, a couple other ones, but it's, it's not too expensive compared to its peers. It is an interesting, uh, space. And actually, this one, I don't, I don't think it's it's a bad business. Actually, I don't think it's a bad business. I think it's as a stock, it could if it comes down further, it starts to get really interesting because the business space that it's in is quite interesting. It's boring. No one really cares about this. And again, I just lowered the discount rate. By the way, for those of you who may not have seen, I lowered it to twelve percent. When you lower it to twelve percent basically uh, alleviating some of the expectations on returns, but you, you can see that the price that you have to pay is actually a little bit higher, or you can pay a little bit higher and get those returns or expect to get those returns, right? You can be a little bit more conservative in your growth and still meet those uh, expectations. But I think 15% is, is, is fair because there's a lot of uncertainty. I, I personally am not a chemical engineer, uh, so I don't exactly know the little nitty gritty details. I just can analyze the business and go, okay, well, the cash flows or might do this. So then it's probably a good idea to buy. All right. So um, yeah, I, th I think this is a great business. Um, uh, on that note, I guess if you guys have any questions, you guys can leave them down below. If you guys have any other requests, go ahead and leave those down below. Uh, thank you guys so much for your patience on these stock request videos. Uh, there's a lot to get through. Um, so what I'm going to be again, trying to do is knock more and more of those out and um, try to get those out to you guys who have been waiting for quite some time. But I'm going in order, by the way, of when I receive them. So I'm, you know, I'm not cutting anyone out. And then some of you who've been requesting from way back when, uh, you might be seeing them come out now because I'm just catching up. And then um, if, if, those are, if any requests are repeated, it doesn't uh, change the order because it will still be at the first time it was ever mentioned or requested. In the future, I may have to change the system and how I take requests because there will be a lot more people having requests. So I'll have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Uh, but on that note, uh, I still have a lot of fun and enjoy you know, putting these videos out for you guys. And uh, again, these, the videos on concepts will not count towards um, stock request videos. So those will come out alongside these stock request videos. And eventually Capital Mindset will have a library uh, videos on diff many different types of companies and you guys can go you know, check them out. Um, and then if anything big happens to big names that I've already discussed, those will always have update videos, et cetera, stuff like that, okay? On that note, guys, I hope you guys have a good one and I'll see you guys on the next one, bye.